Hello, I'm Andrew Danjumbo, and I'm honored to be part of a brand new show called Talk With Your Mouth Full. Some of you might recognize me from my work as a carpenter and host on several home improvement shows. Recently, I moved back to the Western New York area, where my life in America first began. I've been pleasantly surprised by the transformation that the Buffalo area is making. And on this show, you will meet some of our area's most eclectic and influential people, discussing the foundation of where our social and emotional state of society rests in the Buffalo area. Please look for Talk With A Mouthful dinner social events in your neighborhood in the near future. This episode is called Survivor Thriver and addresses cancer awareness and cancer survivors everywhere. My guest today will be Susan Morial, a successful business entrepreneur, owner of Her Story Boutiques and a cancer survivor, and Amy Lesakowski, wife, mother, and administrator at Roswell Park and also a cancer survivor. Preparing dinner for us will be the amazing Mark Shortino. He's the owner and executive chef of the iconic Marco's Italian restaurant here on Niagara Street. And our guests, ladies, welcome. Hi. Susan Morial, Amy Lezakowski, welcome to Talk With Mouthful. Thanks for having us. I see you come bearing a gift. Yes. Are you hungry? And an appetite. And an appetite. Good. Well, I think we should check in with Chef Marco and see what he's cooking for us. Thanks, Andrew. Today we're going to be making some chicken marsala for our guest from Roswell Institute. We're going to be talking about eating healthy and how important the fresh ingredients are putting on your table. Today we're going to be making chicken marsala and a side of orzo pasta with sweet peas, sweet marsala, and a little bit of ricotta cheese. Now I only use the freshest products. We have some farm-raised chicken, antibiotic and hormone-free, which is, which is great because you don't want to put anything else into your body and show you how nice and pure the chicken is. We also have some uh, white mushrooms, which are going to be slicing nice and thin. We're going to dust our chicken off with a little bit of flour, wash our hands, and head over to the stove. Now when you're handling raw fish, raw chicken, raw produce, or anything, you know, anything you're, you're in the kitchen, you want to make sure you wash your hands because hygiene is real important to your health. Let's head over to the stove with our chicken. We got our pan on a medium high heat. We add a little bit of olive oil. It's important to use olive oil. That's really important for your health and it's really important for the flavor of the dish as well. Make sure your pan is hot so you get that sizzle from the chicken. You want to get that crust from the flour. Now if you're trying to be gluten free, absolutely leave the flour out. It just your sauce just won't thicken as much. We had some water boiling, we got our orzo cooked. We're gonna start our side dish on a medium high heat. Again, with a little olive oil. We're gonna use sweet peas. Now I use frozen sweet peas because they don't break down. They keep their form. You're able to cook them at a high heat and they don't get mushy. So when you're doing your presentation to your dish, everything's still intact. So now this chicken dish doesn't take long because if you have your, pot, your butcher or your, your meat guy pound it out nice and thin, the chicken will cook real quick on an internal temperature of 165 degrees. So once we cook it on one side, it starts to brown. We're going to flip it over, get a nice crust started. And we're going to start to season our dish with a little bit of garlic. We're going to put some garlic in our side dish as well. Some whole cloves. A little bit of pepper. We're going to add our mushrooms that we sliced as well. So this is a nice dish that you can actually make in advance. Let it cook for a few seconds in the pan, maybe put it in the casserole dish, top it with your sauce, put it in the oven. If you have guests coming over, you just want to hold it off. It's a dish that won't dry out because we're going to add some wine to it. And the wine is going to act as our sauce. So once our chicken is starting to brown again on the other side and our mushrooms start to cook, we're going to deglaze our pan with a little bit of white wine. And then we're going to add our Marcella wine. Now this is a true so this, uh, a, a traditional Sicilian dish, or us Sicilians, we like the sweet marsala. If you want to use the dry, it takes a little bit of the sweetness out of the dish. So we're going to let our chicken and our mushrooms cook in that wine while our peas are sautéing with a little bit of garlic. We're going to add just a little bit of marsala to this and a little bit of white to this. Now what that does is it takes a lot of the cooking flavors off the bottom of the pan. We're going to let our peas cook until they're cooked all the way through. They're not frozen anymore. It's a real simple dish to put together. We're going to add this to our bowl. 
And then we're gonna take out some orzo pasta, which is like Italian rice, but it's still pasta. We're gonna add this to it. Now, you'll notice I'm taking a little bit of the water, and this is gonna add to our sauce. A little bit of pepper, some Romano cheese. Now, a lot of the flavors that I'm doing in the side dish are the same flavors that are in the main dish as well. Then we're gonna add a spoonful of ricotta cheese. And this is gonna give it a nice creamy finish. I'm just gonna stir it around. Look how beautiful that is. Now that dish is done. Our chicken is almost finished. I like to finish it with a little Romano cheese. Just a little bit of butter to the top. Give it a nice creamy finish. So we can serve right over the orzo and peas because the flavors, like I said before, are gonna complement each other. When this is done, bring it to the table. Give it to your guest. Talk with their mouth full. Let's take it in the other room. Watch our guest enjoy. Check out our website for the recipes I've prepared at talkwithyourmouthfulltv.com. This is one of my favorite drinks. It's actually a play on a mimosa, so it's great for your Sunday brunch, but you can drink it any time of the day. So instead of using champagne though, we're gonna use, it's an Italian sparkling wine called a Prosecco. A slightly different flavor to it, I actually prefer it in terms of a regular champagne. Um, and then the twist in this drink is we use an elderflower liqueur, like Saint Germain. In this case, I'm using a brand called Fleur. It's very strong, um, so you don't need much in the glass. You take a little bit of this, and maybe half an ounce at the most, pour it in the bottom of the glass. I like to take some fresh strawberries. It adds a little pop to the, the look of the, the drink and gives a little extra sweetness to the drink. And you simply top it off with your Prosecco. And what you have is this very mature, interesting flavor. It's a really good drink. And uh, this one here is mine, so. Ah, you'll have to wait for yours. It is so good. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for inviting us. Mm. This is my uh, twist on mimosa. It's the we've got the strawberries oh gosh, on the, and a little delicious, delicious. A little elderflower liqueur in there. It's good. Oh, that's that's. We need some food. That's what we need right now. Mm -hmm. Chef Marco here. Timing Somebody is, mentioned food. Timing is always perfect. Mm -hmm. Chef Marco, this is Susan Marial. Hi, Susan. Hi. And it's Amy Lezakowski. Hi, Marco. How are you? Good, thank you. What are we dining on today? We have a antibiotic free chicken, Sicilian style chicken marsala. When we're doing a play on risotto using orzo pasta, we're going to cheese, sweet peas, and a touch of marsala. So it all complements nicely. It looks delicious. Mm, yeah. You guys enjoy. It, it smells, smells amazing. amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. Thank you very much. Thank enjoy. you. Thank you. You're welcome. <sighs> I like a simple dish like this. It's like very, very clean. It plates really nicely. I'm very hungry. You yeah, don't, if you don't great. eat all yours, I'll take some of yours as I well. I know. I think I'm going to finish it. All right. So I, I forgot what he said this was now. I think it's like a, a risotto based on orzo. It's interesting. Yes, and he also said that it was farm-raised chicken, it's which important. was important. Mm -hmm. That's a huge part of your life now, right? I know you've been very focused on uh, eating well. Yes, I have. Yes, I am a breast cancer survivor, so I like to practice a very high, healthy lifestyle, and mm -hmm. eating is a big part of it, eating healthy, eating clean, and also supporting our local our local farms and mm -hmm. you know buying local when we can I mean that's something that was not such, so much of an option years ago but now there's a lot more markets and, and like farm to table opportunities now were you would you say before you were diagnosed with breast cancer were you living the life you, you are now as far as the how, how um, careful you are with your nutrition and how you live 
Um, I think I was. I mean, I'm a nurse as well, so mm -hmm. I like to believe that I practiced a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But I think I really began to learn more about it when I really started to see how our food was being prepared and, you know, really what I was putting in my mouth. So Yeah. There's yeah. a lot to go going into, like, nutrition, of course, diet, to, it, to how it impacts your, your health. Now, you guys met through, you're both cancer survivors, mm -hmm. right? Both breast cancer survivors. Is that, is that how you met? That is, we had mutual friends that connected us back when I was diagnosed. I think I was still in treatment when we met. Sue gave me a lot, lots of great advice. We had lunch a few times, and we've been, been friends ever since. So you'd heard about Sue and, and, and all her, uh, she's obviously this very industrious woman with a lot of, a lot of um, outreach into the community. Mm -hmm. You heard about her and what she was doing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sue's boutique is about inspiring women mm -hmm. um, and providing them with strength and all those tools. So I've I've always gravitated towards stopping in and seeing the new things that she has in there. Now, a proportion of your proceeds go to the cancer research or what? Um, yes, well, I do a lot of different um, fundraising um, sort of initiatives. Yes, in yep. the community. So we've given back to Roswell Park, which is where I went for treatment. Yep. We've given back to the American Cancer Society, which does a lot in our community. And actually, a lot of the money that we raise stays local, which I really like. So it helps. A lot of people here local in our community, which is really important to me. I'm very particular when I'm raising the money to make sure that it's going yeah. for research and education. and so. Um, That's always a huge concern to the people who are donating as well. They always want to make sure that the money goes where it's, it's targeted. Absolutely. That's important. It's funny that in Buffalo, you know, you know how Buffalo is always the city that gets gets knocked for many things but but interestingly it you know it's ahead of the curve in so many areas especially in you know having Roswell Park Cancer Institute here it's a, it's a center for for so many people from around the country that come into this part this community here so it's it's interesting that you have this outreach already i'm sure that helps a lot with people who are you know that feel that the, the strength and their ability to to overcome cancer is also driven by the the support mechanism that's around them Absolutely. We, we were both treated at Roswell Park. Mm -hmm. um, I was treated in 2009, seven years ago. Um, a lot has changed. Um, people are you know, more comfortable talking about cancer than they were seven years ago. So part of my role is connecting patients with resources at Roswell Park yeah. and providing patient education. Um, and just being a patient there seven years ago and still you know, present there as an employee, I see the big strides we've made to connect patients, um, providing them more quality of life, um, more support, uh, not only for them, but also for their family members. Um, family. So, you, so it sounds like you, you have a huge sort of changed your life around complete, completely when you were diagnosed. You, you finished your, you quit your previous profession and went into to sort of working with, with Roswell Park? Yes, I worked in long-term care as a social worker for 17 years. Um, went back to work shortly after my treatment, decided I wanted to help cancer patients. Mm -hmm. I felt more really comfortable at, at Roswell Park and wanted to give back um, and support them through their treatment. Very passionate about finding new things that can help them get through you know, each day. Yep. Each day can be a struggle and you know they need a lot of support. So. Our department, um, you know, does that for them. No, it's interesting. I've been, you know, I've had several members in my family that have, that have dealt with cancer, and it's one of those words that I think, as somebody who doesn't have cancer, they have a hard time dealing with. They have a hard time knowing what their role should be, how to be an effective support mechanism. So I'm just wondering, what is there? What is offered for, you know, for the family, people who are trying to be there for the person that's battling through that? Because I, I sort of sense sometimes that the the person that's battling cancer is perhaps the strongest person that the family around them are, are, the, are the weak link sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's very important. I mean, my, when I went through treatment, it was, you know, sadly it was about me. I it wasn't feeling well and that was my focus during that time and realizing that, you know, my husband was Mr. Mom for a year, mm -hmm. um, taking care of three kids and, you know, he needed support as well. Um, and he did get it, um, although I probably could have been a little bit more sensitive to the struggles that he had as well. Yeah. Um, and that's something we stress with patients in treatment is, you know, you, you got to take care of your caregiver too. Um, they can't take care of you if, if they're not feeling strong. Yeah. So I'm sure it's a, common, it's a common story when you come out of, when you beat cancer and you come out and you go into remission that, that you, like you said, you've, your life is now so much more focused. Your, the, the quality of your food, the, the life you live, you want a low stress life, that's, I would think that's a focus for most people now. I mean, when they've, uh, when they've, 
been down the path they have had to, to, to sort of like, you know, to overcome cancer there. I'm sure there is like this, I guess maybe a, a sort of a more, a greater appreciation for every day. Yeah, definitely. I think you, I think you realize uh, what's important and you look at the world a little bit different and you realize that, you know, I mean, I think that we're just all on this journey together mm -hmm. and I think it's very important to connect people and that's what I really love about our community and working with a lot of women especially in the community I have a soft spot for women especially because in my in my boutique it's just a place where there's a lot of um, learning and healing and people can really get together and learn how to take care of themselves so I I feel that the the journey that I went through brought me to where I am now mm -hmm. and has really enhanced my life in many, many, many ways. And I've met some amazing, strong people in our community and I think it's important to to share to share share your knowledge. Knowledge is power. Yeah. You know? And I think we're survivor thrivers. Yeah. So Yeah, you two in particular. That's 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 <laughs> important. Very empowering stories. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people perhaps don't don't uh, feel so confident. You know, you have a very you both have a very defined and clear vision of what you wanted to do with with this challenge, but I, maybe that doesn't apply to everybody. So, so the idea that you at, you have this outreach and you sort of help others to sort of maybe if they don't have quite the same strength of conviction that you have to sort of understand what's possible and just the benefits of just being more more focused on uh, um, you know on clean living it's like so important my mother is like that she's like just a, basically a vegetarian but just really eats well lives lives a, a simple life and I think that's just an important key we live these lives that are so full of stress mm -hmm. and it's like I think that's not never a healthy thing I think you're right. Buffalo, Buffalo has gone. We've seen this change in Buffalo, this amazing renaissance for the city, which has been a long time coming. But it seems to be across the board, not just you know in bars and restaurants and stuff. But it just seems to be at every level. There's more community outreach, more groups, more options. Um, so I think this is this. It's very inspiring. I think your stories just really sort of lend to the general trend of where the city has gone, and where and where it can go in the future. Well, I think a lot of people are. Um they're proud of their, of their city and there's a lot of people opening up businesses and supporting one, one another. So I think collaborations are very important too to do in our community to help one another because, you know, it's getting back to the basics of like shopping local and, you mm -hmm. know, supporting one, one another in our community is, is, a, yeah. is, is key to me, I believe. From cocktails to conversation, Talk With a Mouthful will continue right after this. So I should ask you, what's next for you? You're an entrepreneur, business. You thinking of expanding, taking taking your vision to other cities? What? Um, you know what? I'm not. I'm not really sure. Um, I'm definitely on a wellness path. I'm going to continue to inspire women to live a strong and healthy life, and encourage them to listen to their bodies, take care of themselves, mm -hmm. and um, continue to survive and thrive. I like that. You copyright that. I think I might. It's important. It's the beginning of something. It's like a new, maybe a new store, survive and thrive. Something. Something. That's, yes. that's good. Well, yes, but your, your story is an inspiration to me. I know that. It's like amazing what you've achieved, what you've overcome. Uh, and I know, just I know, obviously knowing you, that how much you are a part of the community here in Buffalo. So it's a, you're very impressive. Thank you. Life. Thank you. I, I, I work hard and I'm very passionate with what I do. So I think it's very important to... Like I said, uh, spread the love. And you meet good people along the way. I certainly do. Mm -hmm. And they become Amy friends, friends for life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Friends for life. Absolutely. So what don't we know about you, Amy? So something, um, I'm sure. Well, uh, what's important for me moving forward is giving back and raising money for research for cancer. We have Roswell Park right in our backyard, an amazing place that's you know doing cutting edge research and making improvements every day and, and they need to be supported. I just recently finished the Empire State Ride, which was a bike ride across New York State. We started in Manhattan and rode 532 miles to Niagara Falls. <laughs> and I did it with 62 amazing people who you know, took seven days off from work, from their families to raise money. And we raised about $200,000 for Roswell wow. Park. Wow. So, that's incredible. I, I know. That's, that's amazing. Incredible. That's really, really good. 
there's such a, you know, there's so much that that, uh, that can be done to show your to show your commitment and your involvement. So things like that. And getting families involved mm -hmm. as well. My kids were so supportive. They fundraised as well. Um, it, it's important to give back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you have done, and some. I'm very. Uh, this has been a very. I know this, this is a very heavy topic. Sometimes cancer can be uh, a word that 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 sort of puts fear in people. But uh, this has been a very inspirational conversation. I've learned a lot, and uh, certainly it's been amazing to hear your stories. Just to see how you've dealt with it and how you're touching other people now moving forward. So, uh, thank you so much again for being part of the conversation today. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Chef Marco, for this amazing food. It was super tasty. Okay. If you'd like to learn more about Chef's, uh, Chef Marco's recipe or any of the conversation we had today um, about, about cancer awareness, please go to our website. It's talkwithamouthfultv.com. Make sure you continue the conversation with your friends and family. And uh, until next time, I'm Angela Jumbo, and we'll see you soon on Talk With A Mouthful. <laughs>